Today we've got a nano banana deep dive or you know a Gemini 2.5 flash image deep dive. That's not fun to say. Nano banana plus some pretty massive VO3 news. On the nano banana side I've got some tips and tricks on how to best use the model plus one kind of crazy hack that solves a problem that many of you have mentioned. Okay tally me banana. So yeah, welcome to my fifth consecutive video on Nano Banana. I'm starting to worry about my potassium levels. But ever since it was released, you know, a couple of days ago, uh, I've been really heads down in terms of testing, researching, and actually reading the official documentation. So to that, I'm going to bypass a lot of the how this model works type stuff. That's actually in video number four. They'll all be linked down below. And instead, we're just going to focus on how to make the banana do the banana thing. So kicking off kind of in a weird spot after saying all of that, but very briefly over on flow VO3 fast generations are using zero credits well, for ultra subscribers. Now, given the fact that VO3 fast is, well, it's pretty good, but still pretty expensive. An all you can eat buffet on the Google AI ultra plan might, it might be the thing that kicks you over uh, to note the, that sale, uh, that half off sale is still going on. So $124 for three months. Additionally, they've added in image referencing features on the Flow platform. It's kind of like banana whisk, I guess. Uh, so taking an image of uh, like this guy uh, that we've used a couple of times in the last couple of days uh, and this orc, uh, let's try whisking them together and replacing the orc with the guy. I mean, overall it does work. It is not nano banana. This is functioning much more like, well, like whisk or like an ingredients feature. We'll head back to VO3 in a little bit, but for now, well, let's grab a bunch of bananas off the top. In the last video, I, I kind of speculated that the banana outputs on Gemini were, you know, essentially the same as the API. Now, I was a bit suspicious about that with some more testing. And as a friend of the channel, Lisa points out, so taking a look at these two images that kind of look like Rose after she washed up on the beach, uh, you know, she looks so well rested because she had all that extra room on the plank to rest. Obviously two very similar images, the one on the left run through Gemini, uh, the one on the right run through LM Arena. The real difference comes down to, uh, well, essentially compression. Zooming in just a bit, I think you can definitely see the difference. Like the, you know, the, the Gemini output definitely starts to get kind of crunchy pretty quick. We'll take more of a look at this later on in the video, oddly during the sponsored segment, but it is like hyper relevant to everything we're talking about right now. So uh, that is one segment you'll definitely want to check out. So overall, my suggestion is to either utilize Google's AI studio in which uh, you get the API version, but oddly enough, you do end up getting the watermark. By the way, is it just me or does this guy look like the love child of John Mayer and Timothy Chalamet? This guy's so handsome, he can pull that outfit off or utilize LM Arena, especially now that we have the direct chat. This will be linked down below uh, in which you can run things and it will always be nano banana outputs. Now, I, I did note that this is free, which it is, uh, and unlimited, which it also is. But I will say that after uh, this many, I mean, a lot of stuff. Basically, I did hit a cool down period where it was like you got to wait for 45 minutes before you can continue on. Now, another spot that people have been running into is trying to change aspect ratios. Uh, say, for example, taking this nine by 16 image of uh, a wizard standing in front of a fire that I'm pretty sure he started. And if you ask it to turn it into a nine by 16 image, uh, it'll pretty much just return to you with the same image, but this time with a watermark. So what you can do is create a blank frame around your image. Uh, you can use Canva. I'm using Adobe Express here. Um, you know, you can use either of them. They're free and uh, both of them can handle this task very easily. Um, simply grab this image and by issuing a prompt like extend this image and remove the white background. Yeah, I mean, we, we get the 16 by nine image. You can also do some pretty interesting stuff like changing the framing and putting in text directions and it definitely will follow the assignment. Now, on the prompting side, well, it can be a little stupid or at least unimaginative. For example, trying to insert this AI generated character into this real photo uh, that we used in our last video of Waikiki Beach. Uh, well, the results, well, I mean, it did it. It's just a little bit on the uninspired side. But after going through the Google documentation, yes, I read it so you don't have to. Uh, this was our result, which looks a lot better. So according to official documentation, uh, the prompt format you want to use is something like using the provided image of subject. Please add remove modify element to from the scene. Ensure the change is description of how the change should integrate. 
Now, you don't necessarily have to be super rigid about that prompt format. Uh, as noted here, a friend of the channel, Brent Lynch, managed a stylization transfer of, well, the original Megatron, the real Megatron, not that, not that Michael Bay one, uh, by utilizing a prompt uh, depicted as a live big budget costume test on set shot on film. Yeah, that looks great and using very simple prompts with red arrows as Simon does here, um, well, I mean, you can kind of have your own little version of Google Earth. I guess the point being, don't get so rigid and structured with prompt format that like you stop having fun. Uh, as Ethan Mollick does here with like this garlic bread has learned a terrible truth, but it must never tell. Please subtly change the image to reflect this. Explain. And the banana comes back with the garlic bread now carries its heavy secret. Uh, yes, I am interested in a pamphlet, Cult of Garlic Bread. So ultimately, prompt structure if you need it and are running into issues, uh, but don't be afraid to continue to experiment. Now, the other place that the banana really shines is in multi-referencing or taking multiple elements and kind of blending them together into one image. It's, I mean, it's kind of like the whisk thing. Um, according to official documentation, the correct way to do this is uh, create a new image by combining the elements from the provided images, take the element from image one and place it on with the element from image two. The final image should be a description of the final scene. And overall, the results are generally okay, but the more elements you add in, kind of the, the softer or, you know, Know, the more context the model ends up losing. So there is a better way. As Travis Davids notes here, the real trick seems to be taking uh, the, essentially a contact sheet of all of your elements as one image and then providing that to Nano Banana with a text prompt to combine them. This does seem to do the trick as in this image, we have 10 elements and then combined together via a text prompt, uh, we end up with this, which is, I mean, that's pretty impressive. All 10 items are uh, present and accounted for uh, and look remarkably coherent. So as I always say, there is no right or wrong way to prompt, but in this case, th there might be a better way to image reference. Now, is Nano Banana perfect? Of course not, it is still. AI. Uh, in fact, actually, one of the issues that we seem to be running into quite a bit is, you know, changing the orientation of the camera. And to that, I've got a pretty crazy workflow to share with you. Uh, but first, we're going to check in with our friends over at Recraft for even more Nano Banana. Sliding over and checking in with our friends at Recraft, who were kind enough to sponsor today's video. If you aren't familiar with Recraft, they are an image generation and editing platform that does a lot of interesting things and are home to the Red Panda model. I've been a fan of Recraft for quite a bit. In fact, actually, if you need to get caught up, I, I have a full platform walkthrough linked down below. But one interesting comment that I, that I actually got on that video was, uh, I guess some people are not aware of the fact that you can, you can generate on multiple models on Recraft. It's not just the Red Panda model. All you have to do when you're in a new project is uh, just come up to the model tab here and come under all models under external. This will open up the tab that showcases, well, all the external models. And now, of course, we have a number of options, uh, everything from Quen to Hydream. The Ideogram models are here, three flavors of Flux, uh, Pro, Dev, and Max. Uh, we also have the Imagen models from Google, including uh, Imagen 4 Ultra. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but of course, the big news is that the banana is here. And hey, props to Recraft for calling it Nano Banana, not Gemini 2.5 uh, Flash Image. Uh, yeah, even they know it's Nano Banana. So again, one of the benefits of being on the Recraft platform is that we can generate an image like this up. Uh, this is like cinematic image of a spy standing in front of a phone booth at night, uh, 1980s cinematic vibes. Uh, this was generated up in Imagen Ultra 4. So if we wanna make edits on it, we can just change our model over to Nano Banana. And uh, let's let's remove this car, let's give it a softball. And there we go, car zapped. Again, that was kind of a softball, but a couple of things to note. Uh, for one, no watermark over here. The other interesting thing is that uh, we've definitely seen when you know, you're know you using the Gemini platform that uh, a lot of times the model will crunch your image down. In this case, we end up with the same file raster size for both images. Uh, and then in terms of, I guess, like file weight, uh, interestingly, the edit comes in like 0.2 megabytes uh, smaller than the original image. I, I presume that's how much the car weighed. So that definitely beats it out using it on Gemini, in which we do end up with the same results. But, um, you know, it is crunched it down to essentially like a 720-ish image uh, and then additionally crunched it down to 1.3 megs. A few other very handy things that we have over on Recraft as well. Uh, we have an adjust color section, so kind of like a, like a mini Lightroom. 
we do also have the ability to selectively edit via this lasso tool here. So uh, say we like this guy, for some reason, this uh, is really bugging you. Um, you can just zap him out. Like this is something that would be, I don't know, kind of difficult to explain via text to the banana. So uh, in this case, we can just zap him out via a lasso tool. And there you go. Our blurry AI generated background character has now been wiped from existence. I actually feel kind of bad. Dude was just probably trying to walk home and now like he no longer exists. I did forget to mention that I was exporting everything as PNGs. You can also export as JPEGs, uh, TIFFs in CMYK. That will obviously make the file size much larger. Uh, and then very interestingly, PDFs as well. So that's something that I, I really haven't seen anybody else doing. And finally, another really handy thing is, look, we have seen that Nano Banana is very, very good, but it does have its blind spots. So it is very handy when something slips on the banana uh, to be able to, you know, essentially try it out on, you know, Flux, JPT, uh, or Quen image as well. So again, if you have not tried out Recraft, I do highly recommend uh, swinging over and giving it a shot. They do have a free tier that gives you 50 free credits a day. Um, and then from there, it's just a small jump up to $10 a month for the pro plan. At the very least, I do highly recommend just swinging over there and signing up for the free plan. Recraft is a really great tool to have in your back pocket. Hey, my thanks to Recraft for sponsoring today's video. Moving on. So one spot that I, people have been saying that they've been having some issues is in essentially the camera placement within a scene. So taking a shot like this, one thing for sure, uh, the banana really respects the 180 rule, uh, which is which is actually really good. Um, now you can issue prompts for close-ups on various characters but you might run into some issues when you try to do something like have the camera turn completely around. Uh, a lot of times it'll just return to you, essentially, you know, your input image. What I found is that it can be done. Uh, you just need to be a little bit specific about it. So uh, for example, just saying like, please rotate the camera to show what's behind the current view, that does not work. However, please rotate the camera to show the other side of the lab, that works. As another example, I couldn't get a rotation on this location until I started asking for the camera rotation and elevator doors, at which point I ended up getting it. I think it boils down to needing some kind of object or target to aim for uh, for Nano Banana in order to rotate the camera around. Now, where I think things get pretty interesting and a little bit crazy uh, is when we start kit bashing in with VO. So inspired by a post that I saw from Justine Moore uh, in which she was utilizing the banana uh, to essentially combine a bunch of stuff together to create the ultimate pottery barn living room. And then in VO3, using the prompt fast, exciting video tour of this living room, professional cuts. Well, of course, that got me thinking spaceship tour, because of course it's going to. And yeah, I mean, this this actually really works. And because VO3 does have that like world understanding model thing going on, it's going to like take us into areas and give us close ups of things that I think would be very difficult to prompt to get in Nano Banana. What this ultimately provides us with is kind of a virtual set that we can screenshot and then banana our characters into. Uh, I did crib this up this morning as a quick little test. To note, the audio is a little janky. I didn't have time to fix that. Let's take a watch. Good morning, ship. Good morning, Captain. I do have a troubling report for you. Long range sensors indicate a number of Z-class starships have just exited warp. Please tell me they aren't pirates. Yes. They are probably pirates. <sighs> Come on, I haven't even finished my coffee yet. So yeah, it definitely works. Uh, now, how many like, you know, background videos did I end up generating? Well, kind of a lot, but you know, I, I was pretty much experimenting and that, you know, honestly is what's kind of awesome about VO3 fast being free. Well, not free, let me be clear about that. I mean, zero credits if you're on the ultra plan. So I'll put something together that's a little more polished and, you know, takes longer than 45 minutes. Um, and then we'll run through everything that I learned utilizing this technique. Because, yeah, I mean, it's it definitely works. Um, there are some ups and downs to it. Someone in the comments in the last video mentioned that I never say, you know, subscribe. So, I mean, I guess I'll take this opportunity to say subscribe and then you'll know when that video comes out. I'll also circle back to check out this new uh, image generation ingredients whisk kind of thing. Um, yeah, looks pretty interesting. And if Google takes their foot off the gas a little bit, we'll check in with everything else that's happening in the creative AI landscape. Uh, I guess that's it for today. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.